Fans, once again, it's the one and only Optimus coming at you with another video review. And on today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the new Ultimate Silverhawks Buzzsaw. This is one of my personal favorites from way back when I was a kid. It's actually one of the vintage toys that I still have from my childhood. So this is one that I was super excited about and unfortunately had to wait a little bit longer to get. But here he is. For the package, much like all of them, you do get this nice mailer box with the Silverhawks logo, buzzsaw. The back section here has contact information, warnings. This also sounds like something's loose in there. That always makes me very nervous because as it's rolling around, it can be damaging the paint, which makes me concerned. But let's get this out of the box. Uh, yeah, you can totally hear that rolling around in there. So there we go. Get, get there, there we go. Yeah, yeah. And of course, we got this plastic. We don't need this. We're just going to rip that guy out. And we're going to throw that in the garbage. If I can... No, 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 rip. There we go. All right. And then when we take a look, obviously, here, uh, this is the very cool... Yeah, you can... <laughs> It's making me nervous. Uh, you got that really cool image there of Monstar as, as Buzzsaw is one of his mobsters, but that looks absolutely gorgeous. Come around to the back. You have that nice embossed Silverhawks logo. We're going to slide this up just like so. And Oh, that looks really cool. Wow. The eyes really do pop on this guy. A lot of it is in this uh, reddish color, and then you see the saws are a little bit lighter, but the eyes have that whiteness to it, which looks cool. And then, of course, if you want to read his bio, which I'm actually curious about what that is, because I, I don't know if I've ever known what his bio is. That's kind of cool. So go ahead, take a look and see what you see, and then come around here to the other side, and oh, oh yeah, oh, oh. Oh yeah, that's, um, that's rolling around there at the bottom. It looks like maybe his, what is that? I can't tell, but wow. Wow, that guy looks good. Oh, man. Like I said, uh, this this was one of my favorites that I had as a kid. And it's so cool to get it in terms of a cartoon accurate representation. Because this is how he looked in the cartoon. The actual vintage toy has a different color. It's more like a neon green. So it's kind of interesting to see how people complain about us getting these in, in terms of vintage toys and how this is what they want w when it comes to the Super 7 figures. I don't know a lot of people that actually want a vintage toy recreation of Buzzsaw in that color because that was not accurate. So it's weird how people will complain about this, but not so much that. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. But um, for the package on this guy, that's about it. I'm, I'm loving all of this. So without further ado... Let's get this guy out here and see how cool he actually is. And here we have Buzzsaw opened up and out of its packaging. And honestly, for me, of all the Silverhawk figures that I've taken a look at so far from Super 7, Buzzsaw here ranks at the very, very top. It's weird. All the villains so far have really impressed me more than the actual Silverhawks. And this guy really rivals all of them in terms of the execution of looking the absolute best starting off first with his accessories he comes with a pretty good amount here he does come with three alternate heads you can see you got this standard one that's just him just looking you know buzzsaw e and then you get another one that i actually really like it's basically the same uh expression but one thing that's different is that static just sitting here he's got this buzzsaw that is on his head this one here though actually takes that design a little bit and gives us a spinning look now what's interesting is this actually spins y you can't really tell that it spins because it it, it it it's all the same looking thing so you can kind of see that it spins this one doesn't i wish this one did Honestly, I would prefer uh, not having this and then having this spin. I mean, I get that you're going to create that look of like a blur with the buzzsaw, but you could do that here if you made that spin. So 
It's kind of weird that they included this, but I like that they did. But you also do get this other one, and, and this is where it gets even more weird. You got this open screaming face, which looks fantastic, but you have that spinning element that this one has, but the static look that this one has. Uh, this one doesn't spin nearly as freely. Um, I can feel like some resistance when I'm doing it, but you can kind of see that it does spin around. I don't know if I really have a favorite of them. Uh, I do kind of like the screaming one. It, it, it's really kind of funny looking. You can see it like a metallic or robotic element on the inside there. If I come in, you can kind of see like the little jagged edges inside, which carry on from the, the, the jaggedness of his teeth. Uh, I think that that's absolutely hilarious that they did that so you do get three portraits they're all a little bit different um it's nice uh, i i think that they could have kind of basically done away with this one and just given us two uh with this open mouth and then having the regular one with that spinning i don't know why they didn't but you know it is what it is one of the key elements also about the figure in the cartoon was he had these little pull cords that he would pull them and then would make those kind of spin and such and you can actually remove these and put in this extension piece right here making it kind of like he is pulling it it's not easy to get to though to be honest because the arms you, you kind of have to bend it a little bit to kind of get it or maybe, maybe go like that rotate that around um it's it's difficult to get to just because the way the articulation it is designed i mean you can get it close but it, it's not going to be all that close, uh, honestly. I do like that. Kind of pointless, honestly, because like I said, you can't really articu uh, articulate him to a point where you're going to be able to do that. Uh, and then you do have a right and left version of it. So you can have him with this one. You can put it over there. Whatever you so choose. Uh, but again, he did do that a lot in the show. So I like the fact that they include these. That's nice. He also does come with a couple different guns, which... Honestly, these these are also kind of weird. Now, this is a gun that you can swap out with his hand here. Just pull that out. It just pegs in there. And then this is going to position in there. Uh, honestly, I don't remember him doing this in the show. It's definitely possible. Uh, but it is uh, just a, a gun that forms out of his hand. Nothing overly spectacular. But I do like how it actually kind of fits in with the little cuffs of his arm and everything that's really cool and does do a good job of matching with the coloring and everything like that i do i really do dig that you also do have this gun though that again don't really remember him using it it's this gatling gun sort of thing but what's interesting is you have these alternate hands where ba basically they're the same as these ones uh, but you can see that there's more of a gap between them and this is actually designed you can see how it's kind of positioned there you fold this in there and then you would put this in his hand as well so let's and the, all of this stuff is kind of tricky to get to so you do that and then just peg that in there and now you can have him holding that gun although it looks kind of weird again uh, but that is definitely something that you can do if you really wanted to which again you have options which which is nice uh, you also do get Probably one of the coolest birds um, of all of the Silverhawk birds. Uh, this is Shredator, which that's just a fun name. But coming in to take a closer look at this guy, uh, great detail all the way around, much like all the birds. One of the best bits is that they actually put a little rotating saw on his head. So again, why couldn't you, you know, make the one on him spin when you have that? Uh, but you also do have a rotation here at the next section much like all of the wave one birds have again i don't know why they got rid of that in wave two and then the wings here also have two different sort of sections you got a section here that hinges you have another section here so you can open up the wings and kind of position those in a very cool kind of flight sort of pose I really dig that uh, but you can see that his legs are very very uh squat uh now one thing that's kind of cool is let's just do this uh, let, well let me swap this back out put this on here and just kind of angle everything down we don't need that gun in there 
Now, uh, let's do the comparison here because I think one of the coolest things is the difference between these guys. Uh, here is the vintage figure, and you can see massively different in terms of the color. A lot of the same design elements, but huge size is one of you got this cool thing here where you can lift that up, and then that would kind of close in his little blades would spin around that's kind of cool but you could take his bird here and you can throw him uh, you could perch him on his arm they actually put a little peg right there with a hole the other thing that's neat is that this could spin around and uh, while the color is not di or the, uh, the same obviously a lot of the same designs are going in here one thing that i actually do kind of like is obviously the head can rotate but the tail could also spin around that's just as part of the little blood buzzing thing but you could kind of articulate the tail around they actually made this tail articulated as well which is kind of neat and then because you got the little perch thing right here you can see like little feet and stuff and then you can take this and you can put that there you can kind of do that with this guy as well getting that up there where it's going to sit there and because it's uh flat feeted you just literally just sit him there and it sits perfectly fine much like that one did so it allows you to kind of recreate that look, but this is a lot of times where people, when they're looking at this figure, they'll talk about how the vintage Silverhawk figures look better because they have that chrome element. The vintage Buzzsaw figure did not look like the cartoon, whereas this one definitely does, and you can see a huge difference. And I know a lot of times people have asked the different uh, interviews and things like that that I've seen, they've always talked about, will they do color variants maybe giving us you know those chrome looks i could definitely see something like this get or something like this getting repainted to look like that that would be fun but again the design is still a little bit different if you gave this guy the color scheme of him it wouldn't still exactly look like the cartoon but pretty darn close and i absolutely love it i think it's cool and this definitely sits on here better than any of the other Silverhawk figures with with their birds so it's kind of fun uh when you think about it but this guy is absolutely terrific and for me really does stand above all the other ones we've gotten and bringing in the other villains that have been released so far you can really see just how amazing all of them look these guys look incredible and much like their actual on-screen characters for me personally are stealing the show all of these guys look incredible whereas the actual silver hawks oddly enough captivate me a little bit less which is definitely not something that i expected i mean in general they look great together and as these are the smallest characters that we've gotten so far you can really see how big buzz off uh, buzzsaw is it's just Something about it, though, really makes me appreciate the villains just a little bit more. Now, coming in to take a slightly closer look at the figure, as you can see, obviously, he's primarily this yellow color, but they do break it up with a couple other tones of yellow. For example, you got this yellow that makes up the majority of his body, but you can see that the, the buzzsaw section has a slightly different yellow tone. You got a little bit more of a like, spicy mustard look. For the kind of joint areas, you can see that these larger ball sections and then the hands all have a little bit different of a yellow. And then kind of the same thing going on here with a combination of different yellow colors. So he does have a, a pretty yellowish look, but I do like the fact that it's broken up. And obviously that's very accurate to the animation. And you can see the great head sculpt there as well. In terms of the, the sculpting, and paint applications on him fantastic really very happy with it again the villains seem to nail it articulation wise he is a little bit more limited the head here is on uh, just pretty much a swivel so you get it going left and right doesn't really look up and down or anything the shoulders here though do get very limited uh, you can't get a uh, full range of motion there but you can see that it's kind of on an angle doesn't really move in and out there is no joint there you can pop it off you can see it's just a ball joint nothing here moves so when you have that on there the uh, little uh, back and forth is just from the space of the ball joint so you you get a little but really not much uh, you do have a rotation right here at the bicep you also have a rotation 
down here, then you have a hinge right at the elbow itself. So you can kind of get some dynamic poses with them. A lot of times people kind of display him looking like that. I kind of like keeping it a little bit more rotated, kind of keep it kind of angled like that as opposed to uh, like the vintage one, which was a lot of times just kind of like that. I mean, I, I always kind of liked leaving it off on an angle or so. Like, I don't like it like that, but it always makes the hand look like it's upside down. So I don't know, personal preference, do what you want with it uh the hand thing here that it does rotate and then it does have a hinge actually on it uh you can really see it in the extra hand let me pull that out here so you got the little bit right there but then you have this little section here that does uh bend it's really stiff and, and i don't want to do it so you do have that little articulation point you can see that the buzz saws these up here rotate which i like this right here also rotates around, which is really cool. I dig that. He does have a waist swivel, which is nice to see. Getting these out of the way. The legs do move forward and back. They also move in and out. Uh, it doesn't really restrict anything because you can see that his waist area is fairly small. So it gets a pretty good range of motion. Then you got a rotation right up there at the upper part. You can bend him at the knee. And then it also, you can see, can rotate. Except you got these little bits on the side which do limit it you just get that little bit of a swivel and then you get a joint here and then a hacky sack style pose so fairly normal articulation in him but definitely a little bit more limited especially here with the uh, the shoulder areas all in all though like i said i absolutely love this guy uh i i don't maybe maybe it's because you know i had the vintage one and i'm a little bit spoiled uh, by having that, but I just think that this guy is super cool, super fun, uh, a real cool look to him. It, I just always thought that he was really neat looking, which is why I always wanted that vintage one and uh, kept that uh, in my collection for as long as I can remember. Absolutely would recommend picking this guy up if you're collecting these. This one is very easily one of the standout figures in this particular wave, and that really is saying a lot uh, when we got this dude in that wave as well so yeah absolutely i would recommend picking this guy up and adding him to your collection and if you would like to do that as always you can do the real simple thing and go online to places like big bad toy store or even entertainment earth for both of those places i'll pull links right down there in the video description where you can swing on over and check out availability on him as well as the rest of the wide range of super 7 silverhawk figures also as a special bonus for you if you choose to click on that link and go to Entertainment Earth, in addition to getting free shipping on orders over a certain amount, you can save yourself 10% off of any in-stock order that you place, including these guys, helping help you save some money and at the same time show your support for my channel. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. As always, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in and watching. Don't forget to make sure that you like, comment, and if you haven't yet, subscribe. And until next time, this is Optobotamus saying adios, au revoir, and I'll be the same.